Good evening, this is Bell Geode, and we are back with some Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. Woohoo! As you can see, we are off the coast of Vietnam. I'm starting a new series that's going to run in tandem with our regular story. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight some of the quote-unquote Vietnam veterans, and by veterans I mean some of the important planes of that time period. This one is the OV-10A Bronco. This was designed by North American, and I'll get into the story of how it came about in a moment. This particular FSX version was created by Tim Piglet Conrad. So we're going to go ahead and start the engines real quick here. There we go. Number one is started. And number two, I should probably close these uh, cockpit doors here. There we go. All right, we have clear props and good to go. Looks like we got a good start here. So yeah, this one was designed by the infamous Piglet. He is awesome when it comes to his airplane designs. Now first off, I'm going to address the obvious question. Why am I on the Bonhomme Richard? Well, as part of the design of this aircraft, it was designed for short takeoff and landing. So this is actually something that it did during the Vietnam War was to take off from these kinds of vessels and even um, larger aircraft carriers like the more conventional aircraft carriers and of course it could land on them so we're gonna take off and we're gonna land from the Bonhomme Richard and don't mind the Harrier that was flying by earlier I'm not sure those were in the Vietnam War alright so we're pretty much set to go let's go ahead and get out of here we'll breaks down and throttles up a little bit and then once we get going, I will show you what I've been doing here in Virtual Vietnam and why this series is going to be pretty decent. Alright, here we go. And brakes off. Uh, we're already starting to drift a little bit here. We should have just enough speed to go airborne. There we go. Alright, gear up. I have the flap set to full, so we'll go ahead and pull those up as well. Okay, I think we're in like Flynn. Alright, so we're going to get a bit more altitude, and then we're going to come back around over the ship. There we go, there's the Bonhomme Richard. You probably recognize this shot, that's our title shot as well. And we'll go ahead and turn back towards the ship, and then I'll start telling you about what's going on here. First, some quick facts about the OV-10 Bronco. This aircraft is about uh, 44 feet long and 40 feet wingspan. Just to give you an idea, that's about uh, 4 feet longer in wingspan than the average Cessna C-172. So yeah, it's a pretty small plane. As you can see, it's a twin engine. It's got twin turboprops, which gives it a maximum speed of about 288 uh, miles per hour and a range of about 1,382 miles. Hey, Bonhomme Richard, we'll say goodbye to them for now as we're gonna head over to Vietnam. Among other things, uh, this thing can carry rockets, missiles, bombs. Uh, you could insert uh, special ops troops in there like Navy SEALs and whatnot. And of course, you could also carry stretchers. Very, very useful aircraft that was used extensively throughout the war. Now the really cool thing about how this aircraft came together, um, it was conceived in the early 60s through an informal collaboration between W.H. Beckett, who was formerly of the Marine Corps, and Marine Corps Colonel K.P. Rice. Essentially they built this sucker in a garage, like they built a fiberglass version of the garage, kind of like a proof in concept to see if light attack aircraft you know, could actually be used with you know, certain degrees of efficacy. And sure enough, when they pitched it to North American, actually I think uh, W.H. Beckett ended up retiring from the Marine Corps and working for North American to sell the aircraft. Um, they pitched it to the military and of course most of the branches just basically gobbled it up. So like the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, and of course the Marine Corps all took an interest in this aircraft as a light attack aircraft as well as an aircraft to assist with coin or counterinsurgency and also for observation purposes and probably what it was most famous for in Vietnam which would have been FAC or forward air controller 
So it first flew on July 16th of 1965, and it was officially introduced uh, in October of 1969. From that point onwards, it saw a lot of service, and believe it or not, Boeing is still thinking about building these suckers today. Alright, I'm going to take a moment from telling the story of the Bronco to introduce you to the major thing that I've downloaded for the Vietnam area that I kind of want to show off here. So to help tell the story of the aircraft of the Vietnam area, I've actually downloaded what's known as the FSX Vietnam War Project, which is a French-based project that basically turns your FSX Vietnam to the way that it would have been back in about 1969. So right now we are approaching Cam Ranh Air Base, and even though there is now a pretty big international airport there, this is what it would have looked like back then. So we're going to overfly the airport here for a minute here and just take a look at some of the old birds that are hanging out down there. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of Quonset huts and all that good jazz. A bunch of Jeeps down there. I think I can see what appears to be like a provider or something. And look at that. There's a whole bunch of Phantoms down there and, of course, some uh, Hercules C-130s. That is so cool. So it creates like a whole bunch of air bases that would have existed back then, bases that aircraft such as this would have been taken off and landing from, in addition to which there's also LZs, and I believe there are also missions that come with it, so if you wanted to use the FSX missions, you could actually play um, some of the somewhat historic uh, events that would have happened during that time period. Alright, let's take a look at what we have on the other side of the airport here. There are some areas where the frame rates will drop a little bit. Uh, some of these air bases, since they're using um, various assets from different content creators or different modders, not all of them are ideal, but like this air base seems to be doing pretty good. See, we got some KC-135s down there, and hey, look, there's a B-52. Nice. The AI aircraft do work. They do move. They do fly sorties every now and then as well. Alright, so that's Kamran. A little bit later we're going to look at another one of the bases, but I want to concentrate on telling a little bit more of the story of the OV-10 Bronco, in particular what it was, in my opinion, most famous for, and that was the actual FAC usage, or forward air controller usage. We'll take another look at Kamran there. Yeah, look at that, there's even some boats there. I don't know if those are Navy patrol boats or what. You get a lot of stuff with this um, Vietnam War project thing, so yeah. If you're interested in flying around Vietnam as it would have been back in the late 60s, early 70s, yeah, I would highly recommend you download it. It is freeware, by the way, and there are a lot of files associated with it. Alright, so let's head towards the jungle, Mother Green, and we'll go over what the facts would have been doing with this aircraft here. This aircraft is a little bit of a paradox. It was actually designed to be aerobatic, yet it was slightly underpowered, even though it had two engines. In fact, let's see if we can roll here. Yeah, see the roll rate is really slow on that. We're going to head this way anyway. I want to kind of head over to the hills. But yeah, that's one of the chief complaints with this aircraft um, back in the day, was the fact that even though it had two turboprops in there, they were vastly underpowered. So you would find a situation where, you know, pilots would be running facts, and basically they would get stuck in the middle of the jungle or whatever. You know, like they would run out of space, they wouldn't have enough power to pull out of a steep valley. And that cost the lives of a lot of really brave pilots during the Vietnam War. But uh, one of the things that they would do as forward air control was basically ensuring the safety of friendly troops during close air support. You know, you've got uh, Charlie in the trees or wherever the, the uh, Viet Cong or the NVAs were hanging out. And of course, they're going after our guys. Our guys are putting in a call. Hey, we need assistance ASAP. So we're going to fly over to this area, and I might also add, this plane had no armor whatsoever. In fact, initial variants did not even have armament on there. These rockets that you see on the bottom are kind of like a second edition there. So yeah, we would go through 
the hostile area here and of course by now we'd probably have all kinds of AK-47 fire or in some cases even a triple A fire. Triple A would shred this aircraft because it, like I said it's not meant to be like a huge fighter. It's no A-10 Warthog. But if we happen to spy where uh, the enemy is hanging out we would basically overfly the area and radio for the fast movers to come in and blow the hell out of them. So you might have like Phantoms or F5s or the uh, Super Saber, whatever they had at their disposal. Sometimes even the Sandy, who we'll probably be seeing as part of this series here, and they would just napalm the hell out of everything down there. These guys, these forward air controllers, would stay loitering over the area for hours at a time, almost up to like five hours just hanging out here doing maneuvers like this of course getting shot at the entire time and praying that there's no lucky golden BB that's gonna like take them out and you know completely bring this plane down since you had a backseater in this it is a two-seat aircraft a lot of the times they would employ special forces guys as uh, the backseater since the special forces guys kinda knew what the ground pounders were gonna be doing at that particular time so they were easier to locate them and basically that's what they would do. They would put their lives on the line to ensure that everybody else survived. A lot of these aircraft were lost due to bad weather. As you can see, we've got clouds up ahead. Clouds and hills don't mix, especially with an underpowered aircraft such as this. This is exactly what I was talking about before. Many pilots lost their lives because they just couldn't see the hills on the other side and didn't have enough power to pull up in time. Ended up being a part of the jungle, sadly. But with that having been said, hands down, the absolute bravest pilots in the Vietnam War were the guys who flew this sucker plus the bird dog and some of the other observation type aircraft. So let's say that we actually found the enemy and they're danger close to our guys. What are we going to do? We're going to dive down like this and we're going to launch off some of those rockets at the bottom of the aircraft. Of course, since this is FSX and I don't have tack pack, and I don't even think this plane is tack pack capable, we can't do that. But you'll have to use your imagination. This is us coming down and then we're pulling out after launching our rockets. Now, another important thing that this thing did was launching white phosphorus or Willy Pete rockets, uh, basically like smoke rockets, to mark the targets. Now, you want to talk about ballsy going into an area that is overloaded with enemies, firing off a rocket to mark their location and just hoping that the fighters are only a couple of minutes behind you so that they can bomb the crap out of everything. Now, among other jobs that they had to do, one of the most important was to aid in search and rescue. While you had the Jolly Green Giants, that's the, um, the big helicopters and all that, that would extricate pilots who were downed these guys were often their lifelines. You went down in the jungle, Viet Cong's on your ass like not even 10 minutes away, you are trying your best to hide, you would be looking at these guys here as your guardian angels. Basically, without these guys flying around harassing the enemy and basically keeping them at bay, a lot of our pilots would never have made it out alive after having, you know, crash landed or ejected. So yeah, as you can see, this little plucky plane did a whole hell of a lot to ensure the safety of our boys. And I got to tell you, I got a massive amount of respect for the guys who actually flew this thing in real life, facing against, you know, things like MiGs or AAA and, you know, everything that could possibly kill them, putting their own safety just out there. <laughs> They're at the mercy of the gods, basically. For those pilots who actually did this kind of work and came home to tell about it and, you know, have families and so on, my hat goes off to you. You did an absolutely incredible job that the average pilot I don't think could have handled. Now you may have noticed that this aircraft actually says Navy on the side, and I've been talking about um, their use for close air support, which was primarily like a Marine Corps role. Of course, the Air Force did play a huge part, and uh, some of the special ops or black ops operations that the Air Force and the Army did. Um, the Navy did also use this aircraft, and this particular uh, 
texture that we're running right here is for Light Attack Squadron 4, or Valve 4, otherwise known as the Black Ponies. They flew this uh, from January of 1969 uh, through till 72. And I'm trying to see if I can stall this sucker to try and prove a point here about um, how forgiving this aircraft actually was. So we're gaining a bit of altitude here. Okay, let's bring it down. Oh yeah, now the warning goes off. Go figure. <laughs> But yeah, this, this aircraft was definitely designed with safety in mind, and I'm thinking that when Boeing actually starts producing this thing, it will really come into its own. I mentioned earlier that Boeing is planning on redoing this aircraft. They are going to stick to calling it the OV-10, but they're going to call it the OV-10X. And when that comes out, it's going to have like a glass cockpit and pretty much all the bells and whistles that you could think of that an aircraft like this would benefit for and it's still gonna do the same exact mission that it did in Vietnam so light attack kind of like this particular Navy plane that we're in right now the Black Ponies plane alright so my next task is to go around this hill here and show you another one of the air bases that I downloaded as part of the Vietnam War project for FSX so the next air base that we're gonna check out is uh, Nha Trang we should be there as soon as we get around this hill here. Alright, there we go. Yeah, if you like flying uh, low and slow or even low and fast, you can definitely do that in this sucker. It is so easy to fly and I gotta say, um, Tim Conrad, aka Piglet, every single one of his planes are just a joy to fly. He makes some of the most unique and interesting planes ever. Not so sure about some of his camera angles, but then I do know how to mod that. So a lot of the camera angles that you're seeing in this video, I actually added to the aircraft CFG. Alright, so we got Natrang off to the left. We got a few ships off to the right. Let's go investigate because, you know, well, we wouldn't be good observers if we weren't observing now, would we? I'm going to go below the cloud layer here. This is one of those air bases that does have a little bit of latency issues. I'm not quite sure. I haven't isolated what's causing the drop in frame rates over this one, but once I figure it out, we'll deal with it. All right, so there we got a bunch of cargo ships. I'm assuming those are either cargo or fuel ships, and they seem to be moving on their own. That's interesting. Okay. But be that as it may, we are just about lined up for Natrang, so let's go say hi and see where the uh, C-123 providers are. We're probably going to be flying stuff like that a little bit later on. I do want to show off some of the cargo planes as well, in addition to aircraft such as this and some of the fighters that were used during the Vietnam War era. Alright, so we are on approach. Frames don't seem to be suffering too, too badly. There is a whole city just beyond that that's chock full of houses because Orbix insists on rendering every single house in that area, even though I put the density down to average. Or I guess that would be dense. Alright, we're a little bit high up, so I'm going to drop the throttle all the way. There we go. We'll just float gently down. And remember, this thing is good for short takeoff and landing, so yeah. Alright, so here we are, Natrang Air Base. I'm going to do a touch and go here. I don't want to spend too much time there. Okay, I see a black C-130 off to the left. That's got to be an AC-130 or spooky. Off to the right, we've got the C-123 providers. I've actually been in that aircraft in real life, and that is quite a beautiful bird, let me just say. Kind of like the grandpappy of the uh, C-17. Okay, not much else to see here in the Trang, so we're going to go ahead and take off and get out of here. We're just going to kind of jump into the air. There we go, no tail strike, no tail strike. Alright, gear up. I think that's a Sandy that we just passed there too. It's another one of my favorite uh, Vietnam airplanes. And we're going to go over downtown. It's funny, because of the fact that the uh, the textures, the actual terrain textures are modeled 
off of modern day and then you've got like the autogen houses which are modeled off of what was there in 1969 it kind of looks weird it looks like a combination of vietnam and i don't know downtown florida or downtown la or something it's kind of weird but hey we, we'll work with it suspend your disbelief all right so we've got a successful mission we were able to go in there and do some forward air control. We directed the uh, heavy bombers and the fast movers to their targets. Even managed to loiter around the area and rescue some pilots. Now it's time to get back to the boat. So here is how we're going to do that. Um, I might add, this thing does not have GPS. We are lacking a lot of the usual amenities that we would have when we are flying here in FSX. You can add GPS, it's really easy to do. I think I actually did, I just don't choose to use it because they, well, they wouldn't have used it back then. So now the million dollar question that I have is where in the hell did I leave the Bonhomme Richard? You can see Natrang there. I love the color of the water too, that is really awesome. There's those funky looking cargo ships again, so we're going to pass by them on the opposite side. And I'm thinking... Our boat should be either directly ahead or off to the left somewhere. We'll find out when we get around this cloud here. And while we're waiting to get past the cloud, let me tell you a little bit more about the Bronco. So it's been used by, of course, many different uh, branches of the U.S. service. So we've got Marine Corps, Air Force, Navy. Um, I want to say the Army actually did it in limited numbers, but I don't think there's really too many hard facts on that there. Um, in addition to which, it was also used by countries such as Colombia, Germany, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, Venezuela. And it's also been used by NASA, as well as the U.S. State Department, the Bureau of Land Management, and interestingly enough, the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. So we've been hearing about all them forest fires this year. I'd be willing to bet that this aircraft has actually been helping to fight that. All right, and I still can't find my damn boat. It's around there somewhere. I'm going around the island here, but I don't see it. Oh, wait, no, is that it? No, I don't think that's it. I thought it was around here somewhere. Hmm. Well, if we don't find it, we can always go back to Camran. Oh, wait, no, I think that's it. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay. Okay, I know where the boat's at now. All right. We are good to go. Okay, so we're going to turn towards the boat, and then I'm going to show you some of the stole properties of this aircraft. Translation, I'm going to hope and pray that I'm actually able to land this sucker in time without arrestor wires. <laughs> we'll see how good the brakes really are. All right. And similar to aircraft like the uh, L-39 Albatross, this thing is available. You know, like you can purchase um, late model versions of this that are no longer in use by the military. In fact, I think I actually saw one for sale online. I'll have to look at it again and see how much they want for it. Okay, so we got the Bonhomme Richard up ahead. Hopefully the Hilo will have left the deck because I'm going to need the entire deck in order to land this sucker. I did see some video and some uh, pictures where they did try to land this thing on Nimitz class carriers with great success. Um, as far as landing on a landing ship such as the Bonhomme Richard, you know, a Wasp class ship, I think that might have been pushing it, but then when they originally came up with this thing, part of the deal that uh, Colonel Rice and um, uh, Beckett had in mind with this aircraft was they wanted to be able to use it on roads. They wanted to be able to give it like um, total short field capability, so like 500 feet to a 50 foot obstacle, that kind of distances. They really kept that in mind. Alright, now, first thing I can tell you here is that we are going way too fast to even think about coming in for a landing. So we're going to do like all good Navy pilots do, and we're going to do a carrier break here. I'm going to come down a little bit lower, bring it down to about, eh, about a thousand feet thereabouts. Or maybe 1,500 might be good. 
Alright, so there's the Bonhomme Richard. And by the way, I am sure you have probably noticed that there's an awful lot of turbulence out. No, it's not that I'm really crappy at flying this aircraft. There's really a lot of turbulence out. Alright, uh, we're going to break to the left here. Yeah, this thing just like flaps around in the breeze. I mean, what do you expect? It's only got a 40 foot wingspan. All the same though, if I had to choose between this and a Cessna 172, I would choose this. Minus, of course, the rockets and all of that. I don't think I need all that extra drag hanging off the bottom there. Alright, where is it? There it is. Okay, we need to reduce speed, so we're going to do a little bit of an S-turn here before we actually turn back in to land on the landing ship. There we go. We're going to drop some speed here. Looking good. Black Pony's looking good. Now, bear in mind, I have not um, changed around any of the ships, so the ships that we're seeing are actually modern ships. They're not the type that would have been around in Vietnam. But honestly, I don't think the design has really changed that much. Just saying. Alright, this looks good, so we're going to go ahead and make our turn around. Put the gear down, and the flaps. We want full flaps for this, because I want to come down as slow as possible. I think the stall speed on this is pretty similar to a Cessna, so we're going to want to come down as low as we can and as slow as we can. Pretty much the opposite of what you would do if you were in a standard Navy fighter. Alright, now the hardest part is going to be staying lined up with all this breeze blowing us all over the place here, but the flaps should help. And I think I'm going to use this camera angle. Like I stated before, all these camera angles that you're looking at are camera angles that I added into the aircraft CFG file. I always like to have like a landing cam. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you already know this. Okay, here we go, folks. Here we go. Needless to say, I have not attempted this before. See if I can actually pull it off, or will I end up in the drink? Although I will say, in this aircraft's defense, one of the things that they designed this thing for is to be buoyant. So if need be, it can be an amphibian. I just don't feel like testing that theory today. Alright. What's our speed looking like? Pretty good. Take another quick look from the bottom. I see a helo out there. Dude, you better not even think about landing right now. And I'm drifting off to the right. Damn it, this breeze. Now I know it's a pretty light aircraft. Its empty weight is 6,893 pounds and uh, max takeoff weight of 14,444. But with that having been said, this is still going to get a little tricky. And once again, I'm veering off to the right. I think that's a problem with me being too light. I think I can do this, folks. Here we go. Here we go. And drop it. Like it's hot. Oh, brakes. Brakes. All the brakes. More brakes than anybody can handle. Very nice. Look at that. With room to spare. So now that we're down, honestly, folks, this is the part that befuddles me. On a ship like this, you can see the layout of it. Obviously, it doesn't have, like, the, the widened waist like a Nimitz-class carrier does. How in the hell did they maneuver this sucker around? We're about to find out, because I am releasing the brakes and trying to see if I can park right over here. All right, definitely, I'm not going to make it that angle. Whoa! Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, especially since I want to park it... Uh, towards the front, not facing the back like I am right now. Um, judicious use of braking should help here. Alright, let's see. Can I rotate you around? I think I can. 40 foot wingspan, plenty of room. Oh, all the guys are off to the side like, what the hell is that jackass doing? They're having like their little old smoke break up there or something. Okay. 
Got a plan, folks. I got a plan. I am going to do a pushback and direct this aircraft into that little half a K spot over there. Call it that because that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like half a K. Alright, so we're going to turn this away. No, so far, so good. This crazy idea of mine might just work. Hmm. While I'm doing that, you've got plenty of time to go ahead and click like if you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm going to continue to do more of the Vietnam era series. So you're going to see pretty much all the planes that I have at my disposal, including some that I'm planning on purchasing within the next couple of weeks here. And I just plan on showing off a lot of them. Because honestly, the Vietnam era, it was a horrible, horrible war, but some of the most interesting aircraft came out of that time period so might as well show them off and I guess in my weird way this is kind of like honoring those who fought and died in that war so this one's for you guys expect to see quite a few episodes of this in tandem with uh, the regular story that Alianis and I are running all right we are in position so I'm gonna go ahead and power down and we will leave this pony here in the stable to rest. We're going to call this one done. So as always, folks, I thank you for watching. Like I said, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll get notifications as to when I put these suckers online. And the usual places where you can follow me should be popping up in the credits. Twitch, Hitbox, Facebook, and so on and so forth. Hey, look, good timing. Our helicopter just came in lovely I'm glad they waited for us to land this thing alrighty folks I am out of here ciao